Hey. Hey, what's up? What do you mean, what's up? You haven't uploaded a video in like a month. Oh, yeah, about that. If you really want to make this YouTube thing work, you have to upload consistently. I know, I know, but I do have some good video ideas. Such as? 24-hour photography challenge, I traveled across the world for a bubbly, what's in my camera bag? Wait, hold up, what's in my camera bag? Isn't that literally a ripoff of a Peter McKinnon video that you're watching right now? No. You don't think people will get mad at us for taking his video idea? Oh my god, I guess if that many people are doing it, then it's probably okay and totally fine. I mean, at least you're not drinking coffee or... So what is in my camera bag? Let's start with the most important part, the camera. So currently I'm shooting on the Canon R6, that's what I'm shooting on right now. I picked it because it's one of the higher end models, but not as expensive as like something like the R5 or the R5C or something like that. That's pretty much it for the camera. Not much more to say here, but let's move on to lenses. So I will always take with me my Canon RF 50mm 1.8. This is a lens I take everywhere with me just because of how versatile it is and you can use it for a bunch of different things. But next up, I have two options. Depending on what the day looks like, I'll either take with me my 35mm 1.4 uh, it's an EF lens, but I use an EF to RF adapter, which I'll get to later. This thing is heavy though, so if I'm not looking for like a very cinematic kind of planned out shoot, and I don't know if I'm gonna need it, I'll just leave it behind, and instead, I take this, which, it's not a very good lens, it's got, like, ah, I hate that. Anyway, if I were to upgrade, I would go for the 15 to 35 f2.8 RF lens, but that's like $2,000, so if you can't afford that, pick one of these up for like $100. Next, I have an adapter. So, like I mentioned before, if I'm using the 35 mil, this is an EF lens. So I'm gonna need an adapter to adapt it to my R6. Basically all this thing is, is a loop. On one side you've got the RF mount, and on the other you've got the EF mount. So it basically makes a tunnel from your RF camera to your EF lens. Perfect for if you have a bunch of old EF glass, but you don't wanna upgrade to RF. You just buy this $50, I think it was, adapter. Okay, next, let's talk lens filters. I think there's only two that you really need. You could you could argue that there's three, but for now, I'm gonna show you the only ones that I have currently. Number one, you're gonna need an ND filter. What this is, is basically sunglasses for your camera. So, it's perfect for when you're shooting in bright light and you still want that shallow depth of focus, but you can't lower your f-stop because then it will make everything too bright. So what you do is you slap this on the front of your lens, turn it until it's dark enough, and then lower your f-stop all the way, and there you go. Now you have a nice shallow depth of field when you're shooting outside in bright sunlight. Next, this one is really cool. This is called a circular polarizer, and basically what it does is it allows you to make reflections disappear. So basically, it works the same as the ND filter. You just turn the end of it. You won't see a visible difference, really, but um, when you have it on the camera and you have a reflection, like such as in someone's sunglasses or the windshield of a car, there's just so many possibilities for this and you can remove all those annoying reflections. It doesn't work on mirrors, still hoping that they invent something that gets rid of camera reflections in mirrors someday, but for now this works for getting rid of the camera reflection in any kind of glass or plasticky reflections. The third one you could argue belongs on this list that I don't have currently is a mist filter. Basically what it does is make bright lights kind of diffuse and give it this really nice glow. Next though, let's talk accessories. Extra batteries and a charger, card reader, drone propellers, extra drone batteries, extra memory cards, all those little things that you don't think you will need but you always end up needing. Next up, laptop and charger. These are the kind of things you're gonna need if you need to transfer your footage halfway through because your memory cards are full or in case you don't wanna lose your footage and it just slides comfortably into the back of the camera bag so it's just good to have. Now let's talk audio. I use the Rode VideoMic Pro just mounted right on top of the R6, that's right there. I did have an issue like a few weeks ago where the mic wasn't recording anymore. That's because I think the previous owner of this camera dropped it and the, the actual internal part bent, causing it not to record audio anymore. All right, let's talk drones. I'm using the DJI Mavic Mini. DJI just really has the upper hand when it comes to drones, and this one is small and portable. It's just under 250 grams, meaning you can fly without using a license, which is really helpful. I'm going to consider upgrading to the DJI Mini 2 or Mini 3, but for now, the Mini 1 works just fine. 
Okay, let's talk honorable mentions or things that you could include if you needed it. I don't really know what to call this category. Camera cage. This goes around the outside of your camera and its only purpose is basically to mount things onto the side of it, which is really useful. This one's made by Small Rig, but there's some other brands out there like Kodak Blue, I think, or Easy Rig. Like I said, the purpose is to mount little things onto it, like you can get these really nice wooden handles for it, or even top handles like these, which you can mount onto the top, which allows for easy low shots. You can also mount a monitor onto the side right here, which is really useful. Next, something you might not need if you live in a warm country, but here in Vancouver, it rains a lot. A waterproof camera cover. So, how this works, you basically just stick your camera in here, the lens sticks out this way, and you have your two arms here that you can control from the inside with a little see-through piece on the back so you can see the screen and everything. Really useful if you're filming outdoors when it's raining. And finally, one of my favorite pieces of gear, a gimbal. Now, this is kind of controversial. Some people don't like gimbals. They prefer steady cams, which is handheld. Some of the in-body stabilization on the recent cameras has gotten very good, so you might not need the use of a gimbal if you have a stabilized lens as well. Another benefit, it folds up really small. Well, I wouldn't say really small, but smaller. Folds up to about that and that, which you can just stick in the top of your camera bag. I don't really bring this around with me day to day. I only use this if I'm shooting like a film or something. Otherwise, I don't bring it. And that's what's in my camera bag. Click here to keep watching.